Adele's 30 record was recently released and it quickly became one of the hottest topics in the history of vinyl and today I want to talk about all the ways that I think that this record will change the future of vinyl. You should expect to pay a lot more when a popular artist releases a record. So when I heard that Adele was putting out a double album, I naturally in the back of my head assumed that it would retail from somewhere between $34.99 and $39.99. You can believe I was absolutely shocked when I went on Amazon and saw that they were asking $59.99 for it. That is an absolutely crazy price, but when I started to think back, I've noticed there's been a few other big releases that have kind of been at a similar price point. Uh, Lana Del Rey's NFR that was put out last year was also a standard double record. I believe it retailed for $64.99. So the labels have found out that people who are gonna buy these really popular artists might not buy that many records, and they found the price point that they can make the most amount of money and people are still willing to pay for it. Expect questionable packaging quality from more of these big releases. Outside of the price, I think the thing that shocked me the most was that they put two records into a single jacket. For that price, that is just absolutely unacceptable. I mean, I've been disappointed before by buying a record online that's a double that's in a single jacket, but you miss out on so much of the experience of cracking open a beautiful gatefold record and pulling out the lyric sheet and reading along with uh, as the album plays. And that's unfortunate that there's a number of people who are gonna get into the record hobby expecting these lackluster packagings. Expect more double album releases. So this album clocks in at about an hour, so it makes sense that it was released as a double album to ensure that there's lots of space and the album sounds a little bit better. But I've noticed a trend that a lot of albums that probably could have been squeezed onto one album, uh, stuff in the 46 to 52 minute range, is being split into two records. And this is simply to make more money for the record label. They can charge $60 instead of 40, and that only not only affects their bottom line, but the Recording Industry Association of America classifies a double album as two sales of a record. So if Adele sells all 500,000 of the records that have been pressed, that counts as a million albums, and the album is instantly platinum just from vinyl alone. So this has a business and has a reputation standpoint behind it as well. One thing that is very interesting about the way that this was rolled out is they have essentially taken out the secondary market, something that irks vinyl collectors to no end are flippers, people who will go to record store day, they'll stock online stores and find these limited release, super hard to find records, and they'll grab them with the intention of just reselling them right away for a huge profit. The way that they rolled this one out was that there was only a limited amount of releases, they were at a very high price point, so there was no incentive to try to buy them and resell them. Uh, the record industry has finally found out that if you want to keep money in their pockets, they have to make a lot of records. For the last couple of record store days, we found that popular artists like David Bowie, Prince, who are gonna sell a lot of copies, the labels have made a point of printing 10,000 copies of these versus 2,000 to ensure that anyone who wants them will pay the record label for the record instead of paying some schlub on Discogs $200 for something that costs them 30 bucks. Right now you often see that artists will put out two versions of the same record at the same time. There'll be a deluxe edition and a standard version. With the new Adele record there is only a standard edition. There's a few variants but nothing too crazy but I guess that this could be part of a new kind of process where labels tie in a deluxe edition to things like the Grammys, to winning awards year end, kind of these deluxe editions, platinum editions. And I would expect in a year or so to see a 45 RPM box set, uh, a deluxe edition, maybe with a seven inch, maybe a deluxe edition with a live album that comes with it. And I think this could be the norm that happens in the future is they let the market kind of see how they respond to the standard editions and then they continue to plug away and get the most money possible out of these big releases. Could Adele's 30 finally be the incentive that the record labels need to start building their own pressing plants? This was kind of an interesting situation because they really went back in time for how they produced this record. In the 1960s, if the Beatles put out a record, the label would make a ton of copies of the tape, send it all around the world, and leave the manufacturing in the hands of uh, the local subsidiary of the label to make sure that they were able to produce a ton of copies and get them out in time. But manufacturing's changed a lot better, shipping's changed a lot. 
since then. And now labels will often find a plant somewhere and get them to do the entire world supply. Uh, in Canada, it's not uncommon to go to a record store and find a new release that says made in the UK, made in Germany, because that's just the way it goes. Where with this one, the label tried to have some quality control. They had Ryan Smith at Sterling Sound produce the lacquers, which is the piece that is used to make the actual press that makes the record. Uh, and they sent those around the world, but this gave them a bit of quality control, but we're hearing that some copies are a little bit noisy, some copies sound really good. And I mean, if the label wants to really take a lot of this quality control into their own hands, they're gonna need to build their own plant. One thing to mention too, is that there have been so many big releases in the past year that have still not been released on vinyl and may never be released on vinyl. It is not in the big, labels best interest to continue only being able to produce a few albums a year to meet these huge demands for them. They're leaving so much money on the table with the state of the vinyl industry that it makes sense that they could finally take the huge investment and start building their own plants to meet demand. It may already seem like it, but records are gonna be everywhere. I mean, with Walmart and Target now having their own exclusive pressings, it may seem like you can grab a record when you're going to pick up uh, your groceries, but I'd expect this to be a signal that records are here, people are buying them, and people are used to it. And frankly, in the next year or so, I wouldn't be surprised if you went to Starbucks, they had exclusive records. If you went to the gas station, <laughs> there was exclusive pressings there because I mean, it's normal now, it's not a weird hobby. You don't have to explain why it's cool anymore. It just is cool, everyone's into it. And I think that this is really showcasing it. And for the future, you're gonna see even more in new places and unexpected places too. Something unfortunate about this, however, is that I think that some independent record labels are probably gonna go under. Uh, it's been really cool to see how many Record labels were able to do quite well during the pandemic by putting out some really cool stuff, pressing it, and the amount of people that got into vinyl throughout the pandemic. But there were manufacturing issues, delays back then, and this is just further backing it up, and this is gonna continue. You're hearing about some of these wait times of 12 to 24 months for some pressings, and with live shows still not all the way back, people not spending as much money, it's it's gonna be really tough and it's gonna be one of those unfortunate things where because of the state of the vinyl industry, some people are gonna be left behind. Prices for used records are unfortunately going to be going up with records becoming more available, more people getting into the hobby, but less new records being available. People are gonna to need to scratch that itch. They wanna pick up records, they wanna go buy, they wanna go crate dig, they wanna go visit new record stores and the demand is gonna far outweigh the supply for used records. I know recently I visited a record store I'm quite familiar with and I found a record I've been looking for for a while, expecting it to be about 15 bucks and it was it was 25 and I, I just could not buy it. It did not cost what I thought it should cost, but that's what I'm gonna to have to get used to. I mean, vinyl collectors who have been in the game for a while know that this is to be expected. Used prices have continued to go up as well as new prices, but it might just be something that we have to get used to as the new norm. I'm really hoping that this time produces a lot of innovation. The technology to press records is over 100 years old. There hasn't been a ton that has happened since then, but in the last couple of years, we've started to hear about these record lays where you can press your records at home. There's these 3D printed records and digital printed records. I'm hoping that the mass shortage of production is gonna create a lot of innovation, DIY attitudes, small labels wanting to press their own stuff, not having to rely on the big pressing plants anymore and not having to rely on the schedules of others. Because being a record collector right now is so cool. It is everywhere. It is national news that Adele's pressing 500,000 copies of her record. Who would have thought that her hobby would be here only a couple of years ago? And I'm really hoping that it continues to grow and change and that this is a big reason for it. Anything I missed? Any comments? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching.